Hello guys! Welcome back to another video, and today is going to be part 2 of looking at all of the new cards coming in the Blood and Iron expansion for cards, coming out November 28th. Now, these cards have already been announced, they're not out yet in the game, but they've been announced for a while, I'm sort of catching up on the backlog. Um, and we went over the, the sort of the themes and the keywords of the expansion uh, in the previous video, so check that out if you haven't, if you want to hear my more general thoughts. But here we're going to be looking at 17 uh, cards across um, a bunch of the different nations. So let's roll the intro and jump into the cards. What a performance there by J-King. J-King, full plot armor. J-King is pushing himself into the ranks of the legend. J-King is our world champion! J-King 7! What? The back-to-back -back cards world champion! Alrighty, so our first card here is the Sturmy. It is a Finnish limited, three cost, one operation, three three tank with shock. And the additional, just that on its own, is kind of insane. Like a three cost, three three one op cost tank. Very, very good body. Has a shock on it. This is a good draft card without the rest of the text. The rest of the text says it costs the enemy plus two credits to target or attack this unit. The, the Red Devil's effect. This is absolutely disgusting. Um, this card is just incredibly frustrating. It is Finnish, and it's still like a largely vanilla tank. Like, it doesn't have guard, it doesn't heal, it doesn't destroy anything when you play it, it doesn't have blitz. So it is still just like a random three-cost tank you can play on the board and your opponent can ignore it. Um, the additional effects means that this basically gets to kill something for free, because it's, if you play this on turn three, it will cost your opponent three credits to even just, like, red dawn this, for example. Um, it will cost them, th th well, like, two credits to attack into it with, like, a buffed-up 15th cavalry. Um, it's just very, very difficult to stop this from getting a turn four free hit into something with shock. Um, because again, shock lets you deal damage. The well, it lets you not take return damage on the first time you attack with that unit, and then it loses shock. Uh, so this basically just like guarantees you get to hit something for three and not lose the tank on turn four, and that's really really good. Now the second you get the the shock attack, this card sucks. So it's possible to think of this as like a sort of a deployment deal three damage. And a 3 cost 3 3 tank deployment deal 3 damage is obviously insane, but it's also a lot worse than that because you don't deal the 3 damage right away and then you, the 3 damage is the attack on the following turn. Um, so it's it's a much better card than I think everybody, or than a lot of people might think on first glance. This, yes, it is just like a, a draft card, it is just sort of like a vanilla card. Don't underestimate this card, it doesn't fit into like any specific Finnish archetypes, but this is just a very powerful card. Um, like imagine this in like Jerfin Hines, for example. Um, like you can, this will get buffed by Contest Doctrine, uh, you can reduce the operation cost with Lotus Fight, but even just as a 3-3, like you're playing your, you know, your, um, your T26s and your um, Panzer A's with the smokescreen, maybe some Stugs with smokescreen, your opponent get some units on board, and then you just slam down a Sturmy on turn three, and say, you know what, I get to, like, take out your biggest unit for free on the next turn, without losing any board presence, and then also pop off with the remaining credits with all the other tanks. Very, very interesting card. Then we have the a Soviet Elite, um, and, you know, with Soviet Elites, it's either going to be terribly, terribly costed super niche, or it's going to be a just massive, massive stick-into-everything deck. Uh, type of elite that is typically what Soviets get and again Soviets need the most help So what type of elite is it? Well, it's a T-34-85-1945 It is a elite unit tank um, So it's obviously we're going to try to push the T-34 synergy um, or deck archetype Which we've seen being pushed for Soviets this expansion So it's a six cost six six two operation blitz shock heavy armor one with the additional text of cannot be suppressed or lose shock. So this just has permanent shock. So this just can't take damage when attacking on your turn, basically. Um, and it can't be suppressed, so it also can't lose the fact that it can't take damage when attacking on your turn. Now, obviously this has going, this card's going to have great synergy with all of the other T-34 things, so it's going to be able to operate one less. Um, 
with a morgue, it's going to be able to fight a random card um, with the, the card that we looked at yesterday. Now, uh, importantly, I'm assuming shock is not going to apply when it fights, because fights do not look at keywords, um, so it will be able to take damage when it is fighting. Um, but all around, this card just looks pretty good. I mean, six cost, two operation cost, like, it has a blitz, so that's great, but you have to make it to at least turn eight. I mean, like, you can play this on six and just not use the blitz, and that's perfectly reasonable because it's a very scary card. Um, but it's it's sort of more in the vein of, like, a T20... Um, not a T26. Um, in, in the 272nd, where it's a Soviet Elite, where it's, like, it, it, it's stupidly powerful, um, but it's not quite, like, slap into every Soviet deck category. Um, now, fortunately, unlike T20, or 272nd, um, this card can't easily be retreated, and even if it does get retreated, it has Blitz, and also it can't be suppressed. Um, yeah, this is just a very powerful card. Um, and, yeah, it, this is, this is just sort of a nasty card. Um, it, it's not the hardest thing to deal with. It's just a card that you're going to put into the T34 decks. It's a card you're going to put into Soviet control decks. It's a card you're not going to put into um, something like um, self-damage. It's probably a bit too expensive for that. But yeah, it's just all around really solid, somewhat middle of the road elite, to be completely honest. Like, this is no first rifles. Um, this is no depths of winter. Just an all around solid, not bad elite. And honestly, I will take it. Um, I, I'm glad Soviets are getting something that isn't terrible and also isn't just objectively insane. Um, so now let's take a look at the 511th Airborne. It is a one cost 3-2 standard for USA with three operation cost, Blitz and Shock, with the additional tax to reduce operation cost by three after it Shock attacks. Um, yeah, this card is absolutely insane in the Throp deck. Um, so the big issue with Throp, or the three operation cost deck, um, that exists currently and is getting a ton of new support in this expansion, the issue with it is that USA does not have any cheap three operation cost cards other than Jasco to play down early to help snowball with the unit that gives you extra credit slots when you play three operation cost units, or the card that draws if you have three operation cost, when you play three operation cost units. Um, you really had to go to Britain for the um, first Airborne. And, like, that was good, obviously. But it's just nice to see USA having its own cards that fit into this. Um, and the fact that it's on a standard, very powerful. It's going to give you much more consistent openers. It's going to allow you to try Throp with more different ally nations. Also, just the, the, the text on this alone is really, really powerful. Because uh, one credit, three, two. It means that... At worst, you're, it's going to get traded one for one on your opponent's turn. And if that happens, that's perfectly fine. Like, if this hits a cavalry, if this hits a 35T, you're perfectly fine. Like, if your opponent plays cavalry and then you play and pushes it to the front line and then you play this and then your opponent trades into that, you're going one for one, you're going credit even as well, card even. You're just perfectly fine in that situation. Uh, and then if your opponent doesn't kill this right away, just keep it on board and then on turn three, um, maybe you just attack with it, you kill, you deal three damage to something, um, you don't take any damage in return, this stays on the board, and then its operation cost reduces down to zero, uh, and that means on the future turns you're going to be able to move and attack with this f completely for free. Um, yeah, that's just really solid. You can also reduce its operation cost to zero with something like land for the free and just get that first attack just for cheaper. Um, if, you know, you're, you're going for more tempo plays and you, you're using the additional credits, all around, just a very solid card. The fact that it also has Blitz means that it's going to stay relevant later in the game as well, because absolutely there will be points in the game where you just, you know, your opponent has stuff in the front line, and then for four credits, you play this, deal three damage to something in the front line, and then you get the zero operation cost, three, two. Um, and also it will trigger any of your when you deploy a throb unit effect in the meantime. Just an all around really, really solid card for throb decks. This is going to make, like, it's not enough on its own to make Throp, like, a, a super competitive deck, but it's enough to make Throp, like, actually viable in a way that really didn't exist before, um, and just for these sort of niche archetypes has consistently been the downside is they were just not given 
effective, standard, cheap, playable, scaling cards that were would trigger the payoff cards. They'd be given, like, insane payoff cards and then, like, not the two wills to get there. Or they'd be given the two wills to get there and not the payoff cards. Or they'd be given the payoff cards and then the, the two wills are all just really expensive or just suck. Um... So yeah, it's really nice to see like one of these niche archetypes just being given a very, very solid card. I'm excited to play with Throp on ladder. Can bet that that's one of the first things I'm going to be doing. And if Throp gets any more cards, Throp could be getting scary. Because we've, we've only looked at a couple of US cards and they were all supporting Throp. And yeah, Throp, maybe, maybe Throps is the nuts. Then we have a standard shoots in, the 113th shoots in. It is a 4 cost, 4-4 four, four infantry standard for Germany. Deployment, fight, target, enemy unit. Um, so yeah, basically this is just when you play this, you can deal 4 damage to an enemy unit of your choice, and this will take damage in return. Um, yeah, it's quite similar to Tactical Strike. Um, you know, there's situations where this is much better than Tactical Strike. There's situations where this is much worse than Tactical Strike. Um, there's situations where this is better than Flampanzer. There's situations where this is worse than Flampanzer. Um, Germany is just getting another option in the removal pool um, that could benefit control decks. It could benefit mid-range decks. Um, you could even theoretically play this in an aggro deck. Um, just because if you have some, like, zero-op stuff on board, although that's a little harder to imagine. Um, but yeah, it's because fight doesn't interact with anything else. There's not really any, like, weird gimmicky stuff you can do with this. Um... Yeah, you just sort of throw this guy out there. Um, he's really efficient at cleaning up the 0-4 smokescreen units, um, which is quite interesting because he will not take damage in return since they have zero attack, so it's just basically a 4-credit flam panzer um, in that situation. Um, but yeah, it's, you know, solid arena card. It does something when you play it. Um, probably, I, I would be shocked if this sees any competitive play, and if it does, it's going to be as, like, a one-of. Um, unless there's, like, some weird interaction with fight, but I kind of doubt it. Um, it does have four attack, so it fits that German four attack theme. Um, so giving the four attack a deck, like, you, it's functionally like an order in a lot of ways, because it's, like, a lot of the time it's just going to be four credits deal four damage to something, uh, and then sometimes you have a unit left over. Triggering the four attack stuff when playing so giving the four attack deck removal that will also trigger the four attack things is interesting um i just have a lot less hope in the four attack deck than i do with throp for example um where i just don't see why like how the four attack deck is better than just regular german mid-range without any overarching synergies um but yeah i i suppose also the four attack deck is something to keep in mind with this schutzen then we have a Japanese standard, the 9th Infantry Regiment. It is a 1 cost, 1, 2 infantry. And I said before that um, they mentioned that Japan's going to get a bunch of cheap shock units, and I said that they're probably going to suck. Well, what does this card say? It says Blitz and Shock, and it says plus 2 attack. Well, it has shock. This card's kind of cracked. Um, it's not like immediately put 4 of and every single Japan deck cracked, necessarily. But it's just a very, very well-statted unit. It has Blitz on it. Um, you know, this cleans up 1-3s, and that used to be Japan's sort of nemesis. 1-3s have sort of fallen out of the meta, um, at least in terms of 1-3s being pushed to the front line. Uh, stuff like Greyhound and Red Devils and Days of Old. Um, but this just is absolutely butchers 1-3s, and it also butchers 2-3s or 3-3s because it has Shock. Um, so... You can just play this out and attack something into the front line, or you can just play this out and push it to the front line as a 1 credit 3 2 blitz. I, that makes me think that it's not just going to be immediate um, 4 of in every single deck, is the fact that it does have that 1 operation cost. Um, and, you know, does is, how does this compare to something like Nikita, um, where it will have a destruction effect if it's just removed by like a board clear? Maybe. Maybe you actually run four of these in Jagro, um, the more that I think about it. Because it has the two attack is regardless. And your opponent can't remove shock from this um, without just, like, suppressing it, obviously. But, like, it's going to have the plus two attack on the opponent's turn even if you don't trade into something on your turn. So if the front line's empty and you just push this up as a 3-2, it's still a 3-2. It's not going to get the shock effect if your opponent trades into it, but it's still a one credit 3-2, um, and that's just good 
it's also a Japanese unit with blitz it's a Japanese one drops so you can play this on one if you don't have anything else and it's just a one cost three two that guarantees the front line is going to be empty on the next turn because your opponent's not just going to want to give you a free removal um and the fact that it loses the the attack after it loses shock it's not a big deal I suppose like you could run into situations where like your opponent's playing front line and they push up like a 164th and then play a 35t and keep the 35t in the support line uh and then you like want to get the value trade on the 164th with this but then it's going to leave you with a 1-1 and then your opponent just like takes it out with a 3-3 35t and then it's like less effective there's definitely some counterplay for this um but for the most part it's just a one cost one off 3-2 blitz um that you're probably like your opponent's probably going to just let you have the front line you push this up and then they trade into it as a 3-2 and just not let you trigger the shock um but the fact that your opponent has to respect this card it's going to be actually a super big buff to jagro the more i'm talking myself into actually really liking this card in jagro um maybe we'll fill up the the shibata slot um and now that shibata's nerfed i, I still think shibata is a good card but you know it doesn't have blitz um because this this sort of forces your opponent to respect your ability to shock attack, um, which is going to make them tend to leave the front line open as if they're a deck that doesn't require it. And that's going to make it easier to draw with expansions, even if you don't have this guy. Um, yeah, all around, I think this is a, just a very powerful card for a standard, and it's going to be in the game for two years. You're going to be seeing a lot of 9th Infantry Regiments. Um, and you're going to learn to play around 9th Infantry Regiment because I'm sure it's going to absolutely destroy you um, the first couple of days after the expansion drops. Then we have the Matilda Mark IV. It is a 4 cost, 3 5 heavy armor tank limited for Britain, very similar to the Matilda Mark V, I want to say, that's in the game now. Um, it was recently brought back. And that Matilda is a special. And that Matilda says, um, Heavy Armor 1, guard, whenever you pin a unit, suppress it. This says, um, becomes veteran after it shock attacks and it has shock. And then the veteran version is, at the start of your turn, pin a random enemy unit, guard, Heavy Armor 1. This is a very interesting card. It obviously has immediately immediate synergy with the other Matilda um, because this will continuously pin stuff and that will then in the process also suppress it. Um, however, I think this might just replace the other Matilda in a lot of British decks. We see a lot of British decks running that without that much pin, just as a 4 cost, 3-5 heavy armor guard. Obviously this doesn't have guard immediately, but the fact that it has shock means that it kind of has guard. Also, because it will turn into a veteran, um, it, the shock and turn into veteran is kind of weird together because normally if you have a turn into veteran after attacking on a veteran card like with Schutzen, you want to attack into something very big reduce this unit's health to very low and then veteran will heal it because it becomes veteran after it shock attacks um it does mean that you're not going to be taking the damage anyways so it will kind of negate the shock a lot of the time but what's really important about that is it also means that your opponent can't like, like leave it at one health so for um for example if you just play shoots in and then your opponent drops it to a 4-1 they don't have to kill it because you can't veteran it anymore because it can no longer survive an attack the shock means that it will always survive any attack meaning your opponent has to remove this if you they don't want you to turn it into a veteran which means that functionally has a guard already the only time it doesn't have guard is if your opponent can just kill you um <laughs> or like drastically does not care about you getting the shock attack veteran version and can like bring you low enough to burn you from hand um but like on turn four most of the time in like a competitive board state situation this is functionally just the heavy armor guard with upside um so i do actually think it will replace the other matilda um this is just a very powerful guide also the at the start of your turn pin a random enemy unit can just lock your opponent out if they just only have like the one big card and then you simply remove the smaller stuff every turn if the, if they just have like a big i don't know like a b24d that you can't deal with well you don't necessarily have to be able to kill it as long as you can remove all of their other cards every turn you will just continuously pin it for free with this matilda um yeah very interesting card very very annoying card also with britain having the whole um the the messing up your opponent's attacks um theme with like echelon we saw earlier oh we saw in the previous video um yeah this is this sort of fits into that theme where your opponent kind of wants to attack this 
Um, but again, like, they might not be able to attack it if you have other guard units and stuff. It's going to be potentially very toxic to play against Britain. The only question mark I have around that is, is that enough? A lot of these cards are costing a bit much. How do you make sure you're not just dead by turn three? Um, and not necessarily taking 20 damage by turn three, but just, like, your opponent has overwhelming board control and is just going to push everything face and win on tempo by turn three. Um, yeah, hopefully... Well, I don't know if hopefully, because I don't want this sort of controlling unit attacks nonsense to be a powerful deck, um, because it doesn't sound fun to play against. Um, but for this, if you like Britain, then hopefully Britain will get uh, some one or two or even turn three plays uh, that maybe suck a little bit less. Now we have a Finnish card. It is the Infantry Regiment 56. It's a 5k, one operation cost, 3-3 three, three Infantry Special for Finland with Blitz and Shock. Um, we've seen a lot of Blitz and Shock cards. And it says, deployment, add a sissy to your support line, then give all of your sissy units plus 3 plus 3. So basically, it summons a 4-4 four, four sissy, and for those who do not remember, sissy is the um, the death touch infantry that Finland has. Uh, just says, any, destroy any unit damaged by this unit. It does not inherently have blitz, so you can't blitz attack with this. Um, the give all of your sissy units plus 3 plus 3, I, I guess it's just like they wrote it that way because very niche situations, this will have additional upside. Um... But there's no way to generate a large number of sissies. Most of the time, if you generate a sissy, you're probably wanting to trade it off that turn or immediately the next turn. Um, and because of its card text, it, you don't care about its stats, necessarily. Um, so, like, yeah, you're 99% of the time, you're only going to be giving your other sissy plus 3 plus 3. But it's a 5 cost, 3-3, three, three, blitz, shock, summon a 4-4, four, four, death touch. Good? Yes? Like, if you were offered this in draft, you would pick it. Um, but is it that good? I'm kind of unconvinced. Uh, I feel like Finland just has better options than this. Um, I, I feel like three attack blitz shock for six credits is not that valuable. Um, and, you know, doesn't have guard. You, you're only dealing three damage. And the 4-4 four, four sissy. Your opponent's probably just going to remove it because... Or, ignore it because most of the time a 4-4 four, four will already kill anything in the front line most of the time anyways there's very few times where people are having larger than four health units in the front line um also the the big units that they're trading into probably have four attack so it's probably gonna die anyways um so you can essentially just treat it as a 4-4 four, four. also the sissy it summons is going to be very weak to suppress because it will just suppress into a 1-1 one, one vanilla um, yeah, not too impressed with this card, but again, if you're offered it in draft, seems good. Then we have the 204th Guards. It's a 4-credit 3-6 infantry for uh, Soviets special rarity, one operation cost, guard and shock, with the additional text, after this unit destroys a unit in combat, give it, sho uh, give it shock. So basically, it just has perpetual shock. Um, and... That's very good. This is just a very, very solid card. Um, I'm not used to... It's sort of been a while since we've seen just, like, a very good high-rate infantry guard other than Glamour Boys. Um, like, a, a lot of things just, like, will randomly have two operation cost, um, or they'll just, like, be really awkward stat lines, like a four cost, three, four kind of situation. Just... 4 cost, 3, 6, guard is just a beautiful stat line. 4 cost, 1 operation cost, 3, 6, infantry, guard is just good. That That's just immediately good. Um, after this, and, and then on top of that, it has shock, so it will just, and it essentially has infinite shock, so basically it's just a 4 credit, 3, 6, guard doesn't take damage on your turn. Um... That's just a very good unit. You're just going to play this in Soviet control and any type of Soviet mid-range deck, probably. This is just a really, really strong card. Um, obviously, three attack, it still gets hit by... Well, I was going to say Honorable Death, but I suppose Honorable Death is rotated. Um, but, you know, even if they suppress it, it's still just a 3-6 infantry. That's a big body. Um, 
yeah, this is a very, very good card um, and a very big push to Soviets because the previous four-cost Soviet card that you would want to be playing was First Rifles, and then that got rotated for very good reasons because First Rifles is the best four-drop that has ever been made, except for maybe on-release key. Um, and then the card that you wanted to play after that was the um, T80, the 2-4 that would give you the T34 in your hand. Or T60, sorry. And then Suppress came out. And then suddenly playing a 4-credit 2-4 that gets suppressed and then does nothing is pretty bad. Um, so yeah, this is just sort of a big boon to Soviet control. Comes out on turn 4. Can Soviets be alive and thriving on board on turn 4? Maybe. Um, obviously they have Bloody Sickle. Um, and the 845th got brought back somewhat recently. Um, and maybe that's enough to sort of replace... Um, Bryansk, but I'm not convinced. I think Soviets still need a little bit more help a lot across the line, but this is a very, very big and important card for Soviets. Then we have another Soviet card. Here is a two-drop Soviet card. Uh, maybe this will be the replacement to Bryansk. It is a two-cost infantry, limited rarity, so it's all the same as Bryansk, one operation cost, 6-6, six, six, with the text cannot move or attack becomes veteran when you have destroyed four enemy units and the veteran version says gain shock at the start of your turn so it's basically a different way to get permanent shock and yeah I mean a two credit six six guard with permanent shock is really really good a two credit six six that can't move or attack is pretty bad um, so the idea is you play this card early, and then your opponent ignores it, because it's a 2-credit 6-6, six, six, and then you destroy four of their units with various removals or trading, um, and at some point, if your opponent leaves this on board long enough, it will become a guard unit with shock uh, until the start of your... Uh, that gains shock at the start of every turn. Um, yeah, that's... That's just, like, a, a crazy good card, um, if you can get it to trigger. The question is, how often can you get it to trigger? And here I sort of runs into a question of how this wording works exactly, because it says when you have destroyed four enemy units. So, obviously, on your turn, if you kill something with a bloody sickle, that will count. If you trade into something and destroy it, that will count. If your opponent trades into your unit on their turn and it destroys their unit... Is that going to count? Does that count as you destroying it because it's your unit that destroyed it on your opponent's turn through their action? I'm not sure. If it counts that, then this is probably a pretty solid card that you're going to be playing in Soviet control, um, and it's just going to force your opponent to run stuff like Pack 40 and Sudden Strikes, and obviously Pack 40 and Sudden Strikes make this card a lot worse, um, but that's fine because a 2 credit 6-6 six, six is kind of scary. Uh, if it doesn't count your opponent trading into it on their turn, you'll probably... I don't know. I, people are going to try it. It's a little hard to predict whether it will be playable if that's the case, because your opponent will just simply tr make trades on their turn, um, and then this isn't that good. And, you know, if you're, if you're playing orders to remove stuff, if you're playing an order-heavy deck, then your opponent's going to have unit-based removal at, sort of ready for this. And if you're trying to trigger it with other units that you're playing and then trading into it, your opponent's just going to have the opportunity to make the trades on their turn, and then you're not triggering this. Um, the other way to play this card, though, is with some form of self-suppression. Um, just, like, play this with duress, and you duress this on turn two, and the suppression will remove the cannot move or attack stipulation. And then you just played a two credit six six, discard a card like battle card discard a card essentially, um, and would you play a two credit six six, um, the deployment discard a card? Yeah, I, you would play that in a lot of decks, um, because a two credit six six is really really good. Now is that enough to make, um, sort of Soviet U.S. self suppress playable? Probably not. It doesn't have blitz like you're not going to get the veteran version because you're suppressing it so it doesn't have shock it doesn't have guard um the card doesn't have blitz so it, it's sort of similar to like a sunrise division i suppose um yeah i'm unconvinced that that's going to be a great deck but people are definitely going to try it and if you can fit that package into something playable um then maybe maybe we're cooking here but 
all around very interesting card and a lot of the cards we've seen uh, so far in this expansion are very interesting and that's fun um interesting cards are, are, are fun to talk about fun to try out fun to play with speaking of interesting cards we have aunt freda uh, which is a one credit german order that comes in three parts it's a limited and it says give a friendly infantry plus one plus one add a tank maneuver to your hand and tank maneuver is a two credit order give a friendly tank plus two plus two and add an air support to your hand and then air support is a three credit order give a friendly fighter plus three plus three so essentially it is a plus one plus one a plus two plus two and a plus three plus three exclusively to infantry tanks and then fighters um and you can save them between turns it doesn't discard it at the end of your turn um like the not mediterranean raid but uh there, there was another card that added um additional orders to your hand but all of those got discarded at the end of the turn you can keep these and is one credit give a friendly infantry plus one plus one playable absolutely not but for freedom is a incredibly powerful card and that's give a any unit plus one plus one draw card and this is kind of like drawing a card um in so far as it adds tank maneuver to your hand and is a two credit plus two plus two to a tank playable not really, but it's more playable than one credit plus one plus one to an infantry. Um, and then on top of that, that gives you an air support and is three credit give a friendly fighter plus three plus three playable. Yes, not in Germany though. Um, and that's sort of where it gets a little tricky. Um, because the. Like, Aunt Freida is good because it gives you tank maneuver and tank maneuver is good because it gives you an additional card the issue is can you play air support um in a and can you build a deck where all of this is sort of worth it instead of combined arms this is a much better way of building this deck than combined arms because you don't need all the units on the board at once um which is sort of the big issue with combined arms types of decks um, where it's like you need to run all of these different unit types and then you need to draw all of these different unit types and then you need to play them and you need them to stick and then you also need to draw the payoff card for having all of those units drawn and stick. Um, this one you don't. You just need to draw them at different stages and the first thing you need to draw is the infantry. And that's a sort of where I could see, like if you try to run this in a largely Heinz-based package, um, I could see just getting stuck on not finding an infantry, and then you're just stuck with Aunt Freida in your hand. The benefit is, if you ever do find an infantry, it's going to be easy to just get out all of your Aunt Freidas. Like, if you have two or three of these in your hand, and you draw, like, a Jaeger Regiment, well, something that Jaeger Regiment is going from a 1-2 um, to a 3-4, and then you, you're adding all the tank maneuvers to your hand. Uh, and then you can, if you're playing this type of deck, you're almost certainly going to have tanks around all the time, and then you're definitely ready for a tank maneuver. Uh, and then I guess you just, like, stack up on air supports in your hand, uh, and then maybe you run Comet, and then, a, you know, later in the game, you just, like, Comet plus three plus three, and then it can trade into things. You can go phase for nine. Um, yeah, all around, it's a very powerful card. I'm just not super convinced that you're going to, like, building your deck around this card is better than, again, just doing German midrange without any specific build around synergy cards. Is like, is this going to be better than just like playing the sort of the Reichsbank German mid ranges that we see now? I'm not sure. I would be shocked if this card is never seen in a competitive deck between now and like two years from now. I would expect this card to see competitive play in the next two years at some point. It just seems like a very, very powerful effect. And once Germany is able to utilize fighters effectively, um, like if Germany gets some sort of better fighters hopefully ones that don't have three op cost um or you know the plus the cost six to play with a like comet or fw uh it's gonna get easier but yeah all around very interesting card very fun card um and potentially very powerful card speaking of potentially very powerful cards let's talk about the mouse um so the mouse is a 12 credit 12 10 tank with heavy armor three for germany and it's an elite so uh, the only other 12 cost card in the game is the King Tiger. Also, the only other card in the game that says Heavy Armory 3 in it. Uh, and that's also a German Elite. So, the King Tiger um, was a 10 10. This is a 12 10. So, this is the biggest statted unit in the game. Um, and the tied for second but have most expensive unit in the game. So, what is it going to do? Well, its deployment destroy all units with 
three or less with cost three or less. So that's both sides of the board. And then for each destroyed, deal two damage to an enemy of your choice. Um, and I believe this is... You get to pick each instance of two damage. It's not just like add up all of the units destroyed and then that times two damage to a single target. Um, and this is a very powerful effect um, because it's very easy for both players to just like sort of get a bunch of units that cost three or less sticking on board randomly later into a game. Because, um, you know, later into a game, you're just going to draw your stuff, like your Bryonks, um, or like your, your Nax tubes, and you're just going to play them out, and they're just going to st stick on the board, and you don't need a lot for this card to be good. So, if you, you know, there's just, across both players, there's like four cards that cost three or less, and three is a big number. Um, but, let, you know, four cards that across the board that cost three or less, and then you get to deal eight damage to an enemy unit. Or you get to deal four damage to two enemy units, or you get to deal eight damage to the enemy HQ and just close out the game. Very, very powerful effect. It costs twelve though. Um Yeah, it's difficult to imagine a world where Germany is consistently going to twelve credits and running a card that costs twelve credits to get to. Um, like, it requires turn twelve if you're not using any ramp and We'll talk about Reichsbank in a second, but, like, you know, you're probably not going to be using, like, war machines and stuff. Um, just because, like, German-U.S. heavy ramp is not a good deck. Um, yeah, like, if there's... The problem is, if, if most of the ways to cheat it out um, will not result in the deployment effect triggering. Um, and then in that case, you're just better set cheating out the King Tiger, and nobody does that now, so why would people do it with Maus later? Um... And, yeah, I mean, maybe you're going to pick this off of Blitz Doctrine or Contest Doctrine sometimes um, if you're going late in a game on, like, a German midrange. All around, I don't think we're going to see that much Maus. It's a very powerful effect, but just 12 is a lot of credits. Now, when you're cooking with Reichsbanks, now you only need 7 credits and a Reichsbank on the previous turn to play a Maus. But, like, you know, even then, turn 8. Um, yeah, it's... I'm I'm just sort of not seeing it with this card, but it it's the type of card where like you know people it, it's huge, it's fun, uh, it's flashy. I'm curious what the animation looks like for this when you play the card. I'm curious what the sound effect is when you play this card. I really want to see this card played, but I don't think it's going to be played competitively in particular. Then we have front in er, front formation, which is a Soviet elite, and once again we have a new Soviet elite. What's it going to be? It is a nine cost order. Your HQ gets, at the start of your turn, take one damage and add a T-34-1942 to your support line, destroy it at the end of your turn, and the T-34-1942 is the two operation cost 5-5 five, five Blitz T-34. So essentially, at the start of your turn, cast Siberian Transfer for free, take one damage. Um, yeah, so that's, that's a very powerful effect, it's for the rest of the game. Um, your HQ gets this. And we, we've seen HQ cards before. Um, the most expensive one would be Feigned Retreat, if you want to give Count Feigned Retreat as a uh, HQ card. And that one has a downside of discarding your entire hand. This one has... Well, it, it has no immediate downside the turn you play it. Obviously, the downside is you take one damage every turn. Um, and that's going to put you on a clock, because you do not have access to infinite healing, um, especially with Road to Berlin gone. So, unless you have an Engineers on the board, in that case... You're also healing, too, because the unit destroys itself. It's not like your opponent can just ignore it. So if you manage to stick an Engineers, this, you know, this card goes crazy. Um, also, if you have this effect and you have the um, thing that makes T-34s immediately fight, um, that will be really good because that card does specifically say um, deploy or add. Um, so when you add a T-34 at the start of your turn, if you have that unit on board, it will immediately fight something random, and if it's still alive, you can then operate with it. Um, yeah, this is just, like, sort of consistent end game for the T-34 deck, um, that makes up for the lack of card to draw that that deck often has. Um, and you're, this is a card that you're going to play in the T-34 deck. Um, plain and simple. I don't think it's that crazy, but it's going to make certain matchups perhaps a little bit polarized, um, where if you're just playing like a really slow, grindy deck and your opponent gets a front formation out on you, um, you, it 
it's going to be very difficult to not just immediately lose the game, um, because getting free five fives every turn, even at the cost of one health, is it's just going to be too powerful. Um, however, there's there's a lot of matchups where it's you're never going to be able to play this. Like against Jagro, you're never playing front formation. Yes, you can end the game very quickly following it. Um, but let's say, like, you know, you're going to play front formation and then you end the game in three turns. That's you taking three damage and passing nine on one of those turns. That's a lot of damage. Like, three does not seem like a lot of damage in some cases. When you're against Jagro and it's turn nine, ten, eleven... Um, three damage is a lot of damage because you're probably very low on health and they're just top decking for lethal at this point. Um, also, just every time they throw like a 1 1 into the front line, then your T34, because um, it's destroyed at the end of your turn, so they're not going to be on the board for your opponent's turn, so the front line's always going to be free if you're relying just on these T34s. So, yeah, it's a very powerful card. I don't think it's that powerful. Um, I think it's going to be very easy to over-evaluate this card and just say, infinite T-34s, that's insane. Um, you, we do have to remember that, you know, it's very easy to just, like, push something to the front line, have a guard unit, um, and it costs four to operate uh, and attack something into the support line or attack the enemy HQ. And four is a lot, and you're taking a damage, so it's like four credits and one damage to do this. Not unworkable, but in certain matchups, but definitely... Um, harsh, but honestly, yeah, you can also play this outside of T34 decks, like Soviet Control, if you're just playing a very grindy Soviet Control deck, absolutely you would play this card, it's like Tractor Factories, but a thousand times better, um, it's like Tractor Factories, but you're not, <laughs> you're not bad for putting it in your deck, um, that's all I really have to say about this card at the moment, but I'm, I'm excited to see what else T34s are getting, again, it does fall into the trap of, it doesn't, it, it costs a lot to play, and the issue with T-34s was less so having stuff to do on turn 9 and more so having stuff to do on turns 1 to 3. And we haven't seen that yet. Now, speaking of just really, really big elites, we have Big Red One, which I think is my favorite named card in the game. Um, I'm sure that there's a, some historical explanation behind the name. Like, I, I'm positive of it. I don't know it. I just find the name very, very silly. Just the big red one. Um, and it's funny because it's just a huge, huge dude. It's an 8 cost, 8, 8 infantry with 4 operation cost. And it has a very simple text, which is cards in your hand cost 4 credits to play. So that means they can go up to 4 credits if they cost less. It's going to be 4 credit war machines. But it also reduces them down to 4 credits if you have other stuff. So that means if you have 12 credits and you play Big Red One, you can then play any other card in the game from your hand because it will cost 4. So you can do Big Red One Super Fortress or Big Red One High Altitude Bombing. Um, and yeah, in a lot of ways, it's sort of like just cheating out an 8-8 if you play this with one other card. Um, so for example, in this situation when you play Big Red One and then High Altitude Bombing on uh, like a turn 12, it's like you just played a 4 credit 8-8. And a 4 credit 8 is pretty good. Um, and it's also a 4 credit 8 8 that your opponent has to remove. It's sort of like a 5th Rangers. Um, but now they have to remove it because on the following turn, you're going to be able to do, like, you know, crazy stuff like Pershing, B24J, um, a whole bunch of stuff. I, I, I don't think this card's that good, though. I think this card is just, like, another dumb ramp card. It's a, it's a much funnier than usual dumb ramp card, but I think it's just a dumb ramp card, because you do rely on too many cheap cards, like um, so, for example, supply um, the production order or supply priorities where it's like a one credit order and you know, it does something else um, or you're just, you're going to be running war machines for certain, now obviously you might not need to be playing them, um, but just getting stuff out of your hand you it's an elite, you can't consistently cheat it out compared to other cards. So it's not like you can just throw in the big red one into your deck and then throw in every single card that costs eight or more and just say, like, I'm going to pop off if my opponent can't kill it for a turn. Like, obviously, you, there's a, a world where you can cheat it out early in the game and then you just have the perfect hand, but that's not a world that's that's going to be good. It's just going to be a niche meme deck um, that's sort of relegated to just weird, super, super heavy ramp decks. And that's a, that's a pretty good thing. Um, it also has four operation costs, so you could play this in the Throp deck, but I feel like the Throp deck relies on cards that cost four or less. 
um, and this raises the cost of everything to four. Um, and I don't see what cards you're running that are substantially more than four that you want reduced to four. So yeah, I don't think you're going to be playing this in Throp. Um, but yeah, it's just a very, very funny card. Then we have the L4 Grasshopper. It is a 2 credit 1 3 fighter, limited rarity for USA. With the passive effect, your, Sherman's, your Sherman units cost 1 less to deploy and get blitz. Um, so obviously, the M4 Sherman, the one that draws cards, is going to be a 3 cost 4 4. Draw 2 cards if you have a US front in the unit in the front line, and also blitz. And that's the biggest one. And that raises the question of is this good enough to just run in US front line? Um, just to reduce the cost of your Shermans, make it easier to chain Shermans, give your Shermans Blitz? Um, probably not, but it's going to be worth trying. Maybe you do like an Aunt Freda US Frontline, and this is the fighter um, that you're, you're playing the, the plus three, plus three on. Just throwing some ideas out there. Now, obviously, you're probably meant to play this in more of a dedicated Sherman deck. Um, the issue I see is this is sort of the first Sherman synergy card we have seen, and Shermans don't have any synergies with each other particularly. And also, this is a very flimsy unit, so you're probably just playing this as essentially to give a unit that you are attacking with that turn blitz, and then that gets a lot worse because you can just play a unit that already has blitz. Um, what is what is the payoff? I don't think we need to see more cards that support Shermans for this to be a Sherman card. Um, at the moment, I think it's just sort of more of like a very interesting option for Frontline to play Frontline in, the, in a pretty different way. Because I love what I like about this in Frontline is you can just play this earlier on. Um, it's not like you need to wait for a Sherman turn to play this. You just play this earlier on and your opponent's going to be focused on clearing out the Frontline to stop you from being able to Sherman. But they're also going to be like kind of worried about this card because suddenly it's going to be easier. It's going to reduce the total credits on the Sherman turn. So it's going to make it easier to play units from hand into the Frontline and then Sherman. Um, also, giving Sherman Blitz is going to be very scary in certain situations. But let's take a look at another USA card. We have Women at Work. It is a two-credit USA standard order. Choose a USA unit in your hand. Reduce its cost by its operation cost. This is a very scary card. Um, there's a lot of potential upside. Like, if we just go back two cards to big red one, you can reduce, with two women at work, you can reduce big red one's cost to zero in just two women at work. And then on a given turn, you can just slam big red one for zero and then slam three additional expensive cards alongside it on 12 credits. Like you have 12 credits, slam zero cost big red one, and then you do like Pershing B17F mass deployment. Absolutely crazy. Um, now obviously this is intended probably to be a throp card and there's some interesting things you can do in throp obviously you can just like cheat out a lot of cards for free immediately um but also it lets you keep cards in your hand for zero it's not until the end of your turn you, they're just a permanent cost reduction and that's going to let you chain cards so for example you can reduce the cost of the two cost three four three operation cost that draws cards when you play a three operation cost unit you can essentially just like play its like pay its operation cost or deployment cost on the pre on a different turn you reduce its cost to zero and then on a turn where you're going to be playing a lot of throp units you can then play it for free and then chain off and draw a bunch of cards does the deck have enough card draw to value this um it's hard to say you can also use this to play the two cost um or the three cost to six six four operation cost guy on a or an earlier turn in classic if fifth rangers ever comes back it will obviously be a thing in standard as well but in classic mode you can play this on fifth rangers um and just play fifth rangers for two credits as in you pay two credits to reduce its operation or deployment cost to zero um and that could be pretty fun all around it's a very high potential card it's a card that's going to have to be thought about a lot in current decks immediately but also just anytime cards are released in the future it's like oh you know does, is this enough to make women at work work um i think it might be enough to run like a one of or a two of in certain decks if you're just playing a lot of high operation cost units just as a form of almost like war production where you're essentially just like cheating out credits a little bit 
or it's somewhat also comparable to Reichsbank, where you're probably cheating out credits on a future turn most often. So yeah, all around, this is just a very interesting card, very interesting design space. I'm excited to see if it sees play, and it could fit into Throp. It's a good thing that it's also USA unit exclusively, because it reduces the amount of thought that they have to put into future design space and not breaking the game. And also just immediately, like, it stops you from being able to play... Um, it, it, it stops jets from coming back. Let's put it that way. You can't play a turn three jet um, in an even deck because women at work is also even. Um, yeah, you can't just play a three or a five four zero op cost fighter on uh, on turn one or not turn one on turn three. Now let's take a look at another USA elite. It is the M six. It is a seven cost a seven seven elite tank. With Heavy Armor 2, 3 Operation Cost. With the passive effect, your HQ takes 1 less damage for each of your units with 4 or more attack. So, on its own, it's immediately like a Jasko effect. Just by itself, it is just your HQ takes 1 less damage. And if you already have units with 4 or more attack, or you play more afterwards, um, it's going to quickly, very, very quickly, make it impossible for your opponent to deal any damage to you. So, in that way, it's, it's sort of like a 7 cost 7 7 guard. And a 7 cost 7 7 heavy armor 2 guard is not great, but it's not actually terrible. Um, because obviously, like, it, it can just be suppressed. Um, it, it gets. Uh, it actually doesn't get one shot by, heavy, uh, by Hellcat because of the heavy armor 2. Um, but there, there's ways around it. But heavy armor, tank, your opponent kind of has to kill it. It's just a powerful thing to play later in the game into a throp deck like that. This is sort of the top end of a throp deck to, just to make sure you don't get like burned out by your opponent because your opponent's probably going to have to have dealt with a lot of other big stuff by this point in the game and this is sort of just like the certainty that your your opponent can't just go face and ignore your big stuff i see this more as the top end of a throp deck rather than the like just one of many powerful cards in a ramp deck uh, because in a ramp deck, you'd just rather play a unit with guard or a unit that immediately kills something on the turn you play it. So it it's just sort of like a middle-of-the-road card where I could see people playing it. I could also easily see a world where this is just simply a little bit too slow um, and doesn't see play in anything. I'm just glad that we are moving away from the like laughably terrible, absolutely garbage U.S. elites into the realm of like probably not going to see play, but it, mildly interesting U.S.A. elites. Um, it's sort of like the the opposite direction of Soviet elites, going from just like this is objectively broken, immediately put into every single deck to like this is powerful and will probably see play. And then last but not least for today, let's take a look at a British elite. Black Prince, 5 cost, 3 6, heavy armor, 1 tank, with 2 operation cost, an elite. With a passive effect, only 2 units can occupy the front line. And then deployment effect, retreat all the units in the front line. This is an absolutely disgusting card that just completely shuts out certain decks, and it can come down on 5. That is nasty. It also doesn't have guard. Having guard would honestly make be like a nerf to this card, because having guard means at least they can target this unit with the two slots in the front line to try to kill it, to remove the effect, to get big units back into the support line, or in, into the front line. But the fact that it doesn't have guard means that you can also just hide this behind a guard unit. Oh, this card is terrible. And then, like, and by terrible, I mean, like, it's going to be so frustrating to play against. This card is obviously insane. You put this into every single... You probably just put this into every single British deck full stop. Because even, like, an air deck. Absolutely, you would play this in an air deck. Why would you not play this in an air deck? Your opponent... Heck, it's harder for your opponent to remove your huge support line of scary air units. Um, yeah. Why does this card have heavy armor on it? Just making it more difficult to get rid of. Oh, this card is just genuinely going to be an awful experience to play against on top of it seems that this is the theme for britain so they're going to have other cards to also support this if you get this behind the um the heavy armor guard matilda that's also going to pin units at the start of every turn so like you, one of your two frontline slots is also just going to be a pinned unit oh this is terrible 
absolutely awful. Also, with Monty being coming back in a nerfed form where it only pins adjacent units, well, that pins off every unit in the front line if there's only two slots available in the front line. Uh, you know, shuts down stuff like Blitzkrieg to trade out into the high health units because you can only Blitzkrieg on two units, and that's not that good. Yeah, this effect is absolutely insane. It also raises some very interesting situations, like what happens if you cheat this card out without triggering its effect and there's more than two units at the front line? Does it just destroy down to two random units? Do they stay there, but then if they ever get killed or retreated, they can't move back? Um, do they get retreated? What's half going to happen then? I don't know. Um, it's also interesting that the the keyword, the bold text, is below the passive text. Normally, it's the other way around. I think they did it this way just to show... Um, well, no, no actually, they, they would do, they would actually do it the other way if you say you would treat the units and then only two can occupy the front line. Rather, this is saying only two can occupy the front line and then you retreat all the units. Um, I suppose in that case, it probably wouldn't destroy units because then it would sound like it would destroy units down to two random ones and then retreat them, which I'm certain it's not going to do. Um, so yeah, all around, just an absolutely like disgusting card this oh this might be my like bet for most likely to be nerfed before released or nerfed post released not just because it's like the most powerful card we've seen but just because it's like the least fun card we've seen like this is just going to be immediately put into every single british deck and most decks of the game are going to find it an awful experience to play against this but obviously that will support decks more like say soviet control where you know you're fine playing a slower game you're fine with just a handful of support line slots for like your big t-34s or whatever and and you're always going to have like something like a hammer to take this out quite easily um but shutting down decks like jake or u.s frontline uh or german heinz it's it's a it's a absolutely fine and acceptable thing for a card that shuts down those decks in this manner to exist in the game why is it a british card like, Britain already had good options against those types of decks. Why are you just, like, giving them this? I don't know. I'm, like, not, like, deeply upset about this card coming out or anything. I'm just, like, already bracing for the experience playing against this card. But that is going to be it for all of the cards in this video. Let me know if you think I missed anything. Let me know if you disagree with me. Let you, me know if you do agree with me or I changed your mind on anything. Let me know all of that down below in the comments or you can join my Discord and we can have a sort of more larger, more in-depth conversation over there. Uh, subscribe if you haven't already so you don't miss the next one. And the next video on this channel is probably not going to be part three, but it's probably going to be me uploading the raw footage from my Cards World Championship Swiss round um, games because that is coming up tomorrow on the day of recording it. Today is Friday and tomorrow, Saturday, is going to be the first four rounds, I believe, of the Cards World Championship 128 stage Swiss round. Um, so yeah, um, it, you know, look up the Cards World Championship if you want more information about that or just wait until that video comes out and I'm sure I'll record some intro um, talking about that. So uh, fingers crossed about that, you know, maybe maybe I can become the, the four-time world championship champion. I don't think that's going to happen, but that is going to be the next video on this channel, so that's going to be uh, fun. You're going to get to see some um, current competitive cards as opposed to talking about theoretical future competitive cards. So if you like that, uh, subscribe and keep an eye out for that video, and I will catch all of y'all in the next one.